Hi there, welcome. In this screencast, we're going to see some of the reasons why reshopper is awesome and how it can make you a more efficient developer. When it comes to code navigation, reshopper is definitely second to none. I want to go to a type, I press Ctrl T, start typing the name. I can even use camel case to filter out possibilities. Once inside that type, I can navigate to any member of it, much the same way. If I want to go to a file, I press Ctrl Shift T, start typing the file name. I can go to any member across the solution by pressing Shift Alt T. For instance, I want to find index. Obviously, in a large solution, I can have many possibilities. So we can use namespace, class, and type filtering to reduce these. I can even use camel case. I can type HC to indicate home controller, IND, and that limits it down to home controller index actions. Navigating to a type again. I can navigate back and forth pressing Control comma to see the recent files. I can press shift control comma to see the recent edits. From anywhere, I can always navigate to a definition by pressing F12 when the cursor is on the specific type or member, taking me directly to that definition. From within any file or any type, I can always invoke the navigate to menu, which is alt left square brackets, and reshopper offers me the different navigation options, including going to an implementation, going to base symbols, finding uses of symbols, related files, etc. Reshopper also offers the possibility to navigate to code that you do not have the source code for. For instance, if I press F12 on string, Resharper will then try and download this code from the Microsoft Symbol Server. If it cannot download it or does not belong to Microsoft or any other Symbol Server that we have defined, it can then use the built-in .peak decompiler engine to decompile the source code for us, offering us the same benefits of the navigation functionality that Resharper offers for code that does not necessarily belong to our project. ReSharper picks up where your compiler stops. By offering over 1,300 code inspections, it can detect potential problems with your code before you even run it. From compiler errors, to unused variables, to redundant else parts. And not only that, but it can also offer you quick fixes. That is why a lot of ReSharper users are addicted to the Alt-Enter. On any of these suggestions, I can just hit Alt Enter and ReSharper offers me a quick fix. Of course, we're not only limited to simple things, but more complex scenarios also. Let's take a look at this code. You can see that the names is underlined, saying that there's a possible multiple enumeration of I numeral. Why? Because ReSharper is detecting that we're iterating through this multiple times. So I can just come here, press Alt Enter and say enumerate to list and ReSharper will fix it for me, solving the problem then and there. We also provide support for the latest language features such as await and async in C Sharp 5. Here it's indicating that this method should be made async. I can hit the method sync and consequently the return type has to be of task int. ReSharper takes care of that for me. And of course, all of this is configurable via ReSharper options Inspection severity. We can go through all the different ones and configure them based on warnings, hints, suggestions, whatever we need. And in fact, we can even extend these using custom patterns where we can define our own code smells. We can see here that we have a custom code smell that says you shouldn't be using append and then a string format when you're using a string builder, but use instead append format. All of these are customizable to one's own needs. ReSharper also offers the possibility of understanding better code bases with a series of features. One of these is the inspections. I can invoke this on any class and see the hierarchies of that class, seeing exactly where that class is located in tree and all of the subclasses of it. Inspections aren't only limited to hierarchies. We can take any member and inspect incoming calls, outgoing calls, value origins and value destinations. Things like value origin indicate to us where a specific value is being set and value destination indicate where it is being read. ReSharper offers many contextual sensitive refactoring options as well as solution-wide refactorings. The easiest way to get access to these is just to invoke the refactor this menu, which is context sensitive. I can come over here and press Control Shift R and see all of the options that it offers me, such as move to another file, move to folder, rename, safe delete, extract interface, etc. Going over a method, I can see that these options change, such as change signature, inline method, etc. 
Often, refactoring options are available as a quick fix to a hint or suggestion. Here it's telling me that I can convert this into a link expression. And by pressing Alt Enter, I can now refactor this. I can go over, for example, a method and press Control Shift R and see also the refactoring options available. We can see that one common one which saves a lot of time is extract class from parameters. Sometimes methods have too many parameters and I want to extract them into a class. I can hit this refactoring option, provide a series of values such as the name of the class, if it's a class or a structure, whether I want it declared nested or top level, and hit next and have the class generated for me and we can also see that all of the usages are also taken into account. You can see here that we were passing these values to the too many params to a string format and we can see that all of these have been updated. One of the new refactoring options that have recently been added in ReSharper 7 is the possibility to extract classes. On any class we can press Control shift r and select the extract class. Provide a new name and then select the methods that we want to extract to this class. So for instance I would like to say I want to move the get errors from model state and encode to error string. ReSharper warns us telling us that there will be a problem here in case the method has to be made public or we do not want to apply a fix, etc. ReSharper also offers solution-wide refactoring per project or per solution. Let's say for instance that we are on a project and we want to rename it. We want to go from test to specs and we'll rename the default namespace also. As soon as we do this, we now know that all of our namespaces need to be adjusted. You can see the problem here. I can just select the project, which can also be done with the go to file using csproj. And then invoke the refactor menu and say adjust namespaces. And it will fix up all the namespaces for me. We also offer other options such as remove unused references, which will remove all unused references in the project, making it smaller. In addition to that, we can also do things like cleaning up projects that have multiple types declared in a single file. Again, pressing Control Shift R, we can say move types into matching files, and ReSharper will do that for us immediately. ReSharper offers a series of functionalities that make dealing with cumbersome tasks much easier. For instance, if I'm in a type, I can press Alt Insert and have a generation of the constructor, overriding members, equality members, etc. Select the options I need and have things generated for me immediately. I can also combine this with our live templates which allow us to generate code and interact with the code that's generated. The live templates can also be combined with file templates. Press Control Alt Insert I can create a customer class and it will automatically put it in a file for me. Here I can start to use my templates to generate values and properties rapidly. On these properties I can also invoke more options Templates are also offered to us in the form of surround templates. I can select some code, press Ctrl EU and have that wrapped in a try catch for instance, define a new exception, part of the interaction, Alt Enter and have ReSharper create that for me. ReSharper automatically detects that this is an exception. I can now say Alt Insert and create the constructors for this exception, being aware of the different types that are required. All of these help and assist in creating boilerplate and cumbersome code that we want to try and stay away from. And last but not least, move this into a file that matches its own type. In addition to C-Sharp and VB.NET, ReSharper also provides support for other languages such as JavaScript with support for ECMAScript 5, HTML5, CSS3. Additionally, it also provides first-class support for frameworks such as ASP.NET MVC as well as a traditional ASP.NET. Here we have for instance an ASP.NET MVC controller and we're inside an action. We can see that the action is underlined, which means that if we hit F12, which is go to definition, we can directly go to the definition of that view. Much the same way we can navigate to the layout page and see how ReSharper provides first-class support inside this file in features related to ASP.NET MVC. Here we can see that the action link HTML helpers have also underlining indicating that we can navigate back to the different views and controllers they represent but also get IntelliSense as we're creating these objects. Much the same way we also support partials 
and other features that are specific to ASP.NET MVC. Reshapa also provides first-class support for JavaScript and the jQuery framework. As I start to type jQuery, you can see that not only do we get code completion, giving us all the elements of the DOM, but we also get IntelliSense, as well as completion on CSS classes. In fact, we can navigate to a CSS file in our project and see how Reshapa provides first-class support in terms of picking colors from a palette, completion, and other features specific to CSS. For any file, we can always invoke the file structure window, which shows us the layout of the file. We can see that this represents the CSS file. If we switch over to a C Sharp class, we can see that it represents the C Sharp class. And if we switch over to a CSH HTML file, as well as an HTML file, we can see that we also get the file structure window. Not only does Resharper provide support for ASP.NET and ASP.NET MVC, but it also provides support for XAML, as well as the newer technologies from Microsoft, which are WinRT, which allow you to create Metro applications for Windows 8. There's also support for SharePoint, as well as LightSwitch. Last but not least, let's take a look at the unit testing support that Resharper offers. Out of the box, Resharper also provides support for unit testing. It ships with MS test support and NUnit, but you can also provide support for other frameworks via plugins. In this project, we're using another framework called MSpec. Let's take a look at some of the specifications that MSpec uses. We can see that immediately Resharper provides us with options to run and execute unit tests. And we can just click run on one unit test or a whole group of unit tests and have Resharper run that unit test. Additionally, other unit testing frameworks such as XUnit can also be run using Resharper's unit test runner via plugins. And talking about plugins, let's not forget that Resharper ships with an SDK, which allows us to create our own plugins for Resharper and plug in the different extensibility points that it offers, such as context actions, unit test runners, quick fixes, analysis, etc. All of this documented and with templates shipping out of the box with Visual Studio.